bees. They build complex structures that today we use in sports cars and space shuttles. Social insects who live in colonies with populations in the thousands not only engineer complex structures, they also control their environment much like humans. Honeybees are probably the best at this. The interior of a honeybee's hive is a very constant and predictable environment. And the honeybee is probably the insect which has the widest distribution naturally in the world. And one key to this is how well it's able to control its environment through its group engineering. Bees are fantastic engineers. Not only are they doing remarkable things in terms of structure within the nest, they are remarkable in the way that they work. This is something that any team leader on a construction project would be proud of. And they work for honey. <laughs> Honeybees demonstrate their engineering skills building a honeycomb, the network of wax cells they use to house larvae and store honey. This marvel of animal architecture begins with a unique building material, beeswax. When worker bees are between 12 days old and 18 days old, their wax glands come into development and they create tiny flakes of wax. They take it from their abdomen with their back legs, which have little spikes on them, move it to their forelegs and then into their mouth. They chew it for a few seconds and soften it to create beeswax. Hundreds of worker bees, the all-female labor force of the colony, mold and position pinhead-sized flecks of wax to build a single cell. Multiply that cell by as many as 30,000 and you have a typical honeycomb. Here's an example of bee honeycomb. This is a natural paddle of beeswax that was created by hundreds, probably thousands of bees. Bees start at the top, creating a row of cells, then move downward. Each paddle, as the honeycomb is also called, has cells on both sides. When they're done making one, the bees make another, and so on. Charles Darwin was so impressed with the honeycomb that he declared it a masterpiece of engineering that's absolutely perfect in economizing labor and wax. At the center of this masterpiece is the shape that is perfect for this construction, the hexagon. You could have, say, a circle or uh, an octagon. If you put those together, there'd be spaces between the different cells. With a hexagon, there are no spaces, and the sides are all shared. You can do that with a triangle or a square as well, build it all together where all the sides are touching for strength. But it uses more material. The hexagon has the smallest circumference for the same amount of volume. So the hexagon is perfect architecture. Bees reinforce this perfect architecture by offsetting the cells on both sides of the honeycomb. This master stroke of engineering strengthens the honeycomb while further reducing the amount of wax needed to build it. The cells need to be strong to serve their functions as pens for the brood and compartments for all the honey the bees make. More than 100 pounds per hive per year. Storing all that honey requires more ingenious engineering. Bees naturally angle the interior walls of each cell at 13 degrees. This slant keeps the watery nectar that bees store there from dripping out. When the honey's ready, the bees cap the cells. As masters of their environment, bees keep their hives at a constant 93 degrees. At that temperature, the brood develops properly, nectar ripens into honey, and wax stays malleable for molding cells. If the temperature drops below 93, the bees bunch together to create warmth. If it gets too hot, they fan their wings or evaporate water to cool off the hive. engineering expertise has awed humans for centuries. 
Ancient Greek scholars seeking an explanation believed bees possessed what they described as a certain geometrical forethought. It's basically instinct, but it's collective instinct. The worker bee only lives about five weeks, 35 days. So it's not that they have time to learn the tasks, they just know instinctively how to do these things. Bees kind of humble us. Bees just have these eeny little brains, and yet they go around and they make immaculate honeycomb all the time. They don't have to be taught, they don't have to go to school, they don't need manufacturing outlines, they don't need specifications, they just do it. And it works, and it makes us look like, why are we even bothering? We bother to manufacture honeycomb to give an engineered structure strength, and at the same time, keep it lightweight. Industrial honeycomb derives its strength mainly from the hexagon, the same essential shape that forms a bee honeycomb. The hexagon intrigues engineers because it distributes impact force in several different directions all at once. And it doesn't have right angle corners which are typically vulnerable in an engineering environment. The hexagon shape holds up better. That's why humans make honeycomb out of just about any material, from paper to aluminum. Normally what you'll do with honeycomb is you'll sandwich it between a top and bottom skin. You have force on this side or you could have force on this side. And either way, you're going to be supporting it, not by the skin, which itself is not very strong, but you're going to be supporting it by the honeycomb. And use it in fast cars subways, airplanes, jet fighters, even the space shuttle and satellites.